Hey professionals, in this video, I wanna go through how you can prepare for all the different types of interviews that you can encounter during your assessment center or day. I want you to be able to provide them the best impression so they have no doubts to hire you. This video has been highly requested and should definitely be a follow-up on the seven tips to help you prepare and smash assessment centers. I will put a link to that video in the description down below, so definitely check that out if you haven't already. As you can see in the title of this video, there are a lot of interview types that you need to prepare for, and I'm gonna go through them all. I will be discussing each type separately, so feel free to pause and make some notes along the way. So let's talk about presentations, preparing them, making them, and presenting them. Usually there are two types of presentations that they ask you to do. Present something that you're familiar with, so that can be your dissertation, a hobby, an interest, or it could actually be a solution to a business problem that they may have. If you are presented with a choice of topics, then I'd recommend you choose something that you're highly familiar with. I wouldn't go for something that you don't understand just because it will seem impressive to them because at the end of the day, you won't be confident in delivering that presentation and you might even stutter on some follow-up questions that they may ask you at the end. It's always better to present confidently on a topic that you fully understand than something that could be just complicated and requires more work. Before I go through the structure of the presentation, there are four things that you need to be finding out. The topic of the presentation, the length of the presentation, what resources can you actually use in order to create this presentation? And finally, who will you actually be presenting to? So when you found out those things, let's talk about the structure. Every presentation needs a beginning, middle and end. At the beginning, you need to welcome the audience and set the agenda. In today's presentation, we will be covering this will help you start off strong. Okay, um, today we're going to be talking about PowerPoint. PowerPoint, PowerPoint, PowerPoint. Giving your presentation a good structure will help you feel secure and also let the audience know what's going on, what's gonna be discussed, and what will come up. So after the intro slide and the you setting the agenda, you want to be talking about your main points. This is where you got to factor in the time element. How much time have you got to actually present this presentation? Your main points should be covering two to three slides and you want to be talking for a few minutes on each point. So make sure you're not waffling. If you have a limited amount of time, don't try and cram every bits of detail in this presentation. They're assessing you to yeah, see how you can present confidently and if you can actually manage your time. It's best to always cover a few points well than to just rush. At the end of the day, a memorable presentation is a successful presentation. People always say you always ask questions at the end. That's absolutely right, but I would even take it a step further and during that presentation, pause and ask if they have any questions. This helps keep the audience engaged. It also facilitates that you're not just talking at them, but you're talking with them and you're having that two-way conversation. If the audience can remember and take something away from the presentation that you just presented, then you've done a really good job presenting. Great success. If you provide too much information and you're waffling, they'll just switch off. The end of the presentation should just be a summary of what you've covered. So they can obviously take something away from that presentation. You need to thank them for their time and then open the floor to questions. Okay, so that's the structure. Let's talk about the content that you need to put in your presentation. It might sound stupid, but less is actually more when it comes to presentation. You don't want to be adding a lot of text because the audience will just be reading a lot more than actually listening. So to keep them engaged, you want to consider using simple diagrams, charts, and yeah, graphs to really illustrate your points. You want to keep the design style straightforward and try and make it on brand to the employer that you're going for. So GSK, their colors are, well, like the bright colors, orange. So try and make your presentation around that brand. Bullet points are fine, you just don't want massive paragraphs that you're just reading off because that can just be boring. You want to be keeping the bullet points brief and you expanding on that bullet point. And you know what? Half the battle of a successful presentation isn't just the content, it's actually the delivery of the presentation. It's like me making my videos. Half the battle isn't just how it looks, it's actually me explaining my points and yeah, being engaging, isn't it? Don't forget, employees ask you to do a presentation because they're assessing if you can communicate clearly 
and formally, as well as testing your public speaking skills and how you can deal with pressure. On top of that, presentations are brilliant for them to understand if you have great skills with your timing and actually being able to persuade someone. So when you're delivering your presentation, think about body language. By body language and what you need to think about is actually smiling, maintaining eye contact with your audience and just making sure, oh, I stop it. Doing a madness. Okay, so yeah, smile, maintain eye contact. You wanna be speaking with confidence and you wanna be loud enough that everyone hears, but you don't wanna be shouting at them. You wanna be speaking to them. If you're like me and you generally speak very fast, then doing that presentation, you're gonna be a little bit nervous, which is okay, but you are gonna be a little bit nervous. So what you can do is, if you feel like you are speaking faster, then just take a deep breath, breathe, pause, and just let the audience absorb what you just had to say. This will help you keep your mind on track as well. So you also wanna be aware of your hand gestures. You don't wanna be fidgeting a lot or like biting like, like this maybe and you don't want to be like looking away and not giving them eye contact because that's just poor body language and you're not really keeping them engaged you're probably thinking oh well how can i actually understand what my body language is like well you need to practice unfortunately you need to practice practice with a range of different people because then you can get their opinions on yeah how you present practice with someone sort of senior someone that's actually working in a role where they actually deliver a lot of presentations that is valuable advice make sure you do your presentation like you're standing and you're seating like you're at a concert I don't, that doesn't really make sense but you want to make sure as well that you when you're practicing your presentation that you know it you want to know 90% of your presentation off by heart and uh, the 10% is just there to yeah look at your notes and just a rejig okay yeah this is what's coming up practicing will also get your timing right and will measure the pace of you speaking finally when it comes to presentations you will be getting asked questions at the end so you want to be preempting the questions that they potentially could ask so if there's anything that you missed so the main points that you could have incorporated in your presentation, but it was just too big and you couldn't cram everything. Make sure you read up on those topics so you're aware of those topics as they may ask you questions around that. They may ask you questions around the pros or the cons. So if you was like the pros of this, then maybe what are the disadvantages of this? Think about the competitors. Maybe think about why you chose this topic and really justify your points. Why did I have to like just stop recording and then I lost a lot? Okay, let's talk about intro exercises. Intro exercises are designed to put you in a real life workplace situation scenario and are designed to see how you'd come about actually organizing and prioritizing workload. You need to actually justify why you're prioritizing this as high importance rather than low importance. In order to perform well on these tasks, you need to be demonstrating a range of skills. So that can be organization, creativity, problem solving. Most importantly, they're looking at your judgment skills. You're in luck because I have made a video on how to have effective time management and it's all about organizing workloads. So definitely do check that out. I will put a link of that video in the description down below. I'm not gonna lie, intro exercises are very challenging because at the end of the day, you don't actually know what you're expected to do until you actually sit on that hot seat and just like do the work. So my best advice would be to read all the instructions carefully and all the information that is accompanying that task. Start by making a rough plan and if you can, annotate the work documents that you are given, making bullet points. Remember, your primary goal is to prioritize these items and then justify why you have prioritized these items. So these items could be responding to queries, drafting complex replies to emails, delegating tasks to other team members. Maybe you have to rely on someone that has a short window, so you need to put that of high priority to any of the other tasks because there's a time constraint there. So think about what's of high priority, low priority, and the time it takes to actually complete that task. And if there are any external factors, you wanna make sure that you're staying calm and that your nerves aren't influencing any bad or wrong decisions. And definitely you wanna be mindful of the time that you're given. They're looking at if you can actually manage the time that you're given and complete a task within that time. You don't wanna be fixating on one point. If you feel like it's right, trust your gut and just go with it. If you have to draft any emails, then you need to be thinking about spelling and grammar and the structure of that email. Don't forget, they are definitely assessing your written competency. Finally, you want to be realistic on what you want to do as well as what is actually best for the company. My next interview that I want to go through are written tests, 
I did just briefly touch upon that, so make sure you are proofreading your work at the end. Make sure you're remembering uh, the structure of emails and how they are set and make sure the formatting is all good. So think about headings, putting things in bold, italics. These written tasks usually comprise of you writing an email or drafting a letter. Maybe you're actually provided with key findings and results and you have to come up and write a concise written report. Don't try and overcomplicate what you need to condense. Okay, let's talk about case studies. These are really common for management consulting firms or accounting firms. Case studies are there to assess your problem solving skills and your creativity skills. They are used to directly show the employer what you can do rather than you just telling them what you can do. So basically you'll be presented with some information on a work life scenario and you'll be provided to examine all the findings and then present them and probably mention a solution to these findings and your conclusions. This can also be done in a written form, so in a presentation or an email. So this is why if you think you don't have a presentation coming up because they haven't mentioned it and you have a case study then definitely go back to that presentation section that you might have skipped and re-watch that. So here are my quick tips on helping you smash that case study. Make sure you know what you're asked to do, understand your role, the problem and the objectives in solving that problem. Read through the information pack and start making bullet points so this can be pros and cons and start collating all the most relevant information. I've mentioned this in all the points but keep thinking of the time that is required to actually complete this task. You don't want to yeah, overrun because it just shows poor time management. If you are working in a group then use the divide and conquer method. So break that task down into smaller tasks, delegate those smaller tasks to everyone within the group. This also shows leadership and you'll be able to get that job done quicker and it's okay to ask for more information or even clarify little points if you're unsure. The final presentation should be clear, concise, and actually have a summary of your conclusion and any further recommendations. You wanna make sure that you're able to justify any point or decision you or your team has made. Finally, let's talk about group exercises. The group exercise is not only used to see your communication, problem solving skills, creativity. For this, it's actually really important for them to know if you can actually work well within a team. So here are my general tips when it comes to group exercises. The best way to impress them is to show them that you're a great team player. So you wanna be flexible, full of ideas, and you're always open to hearing what your teammates have to say. You wanna be contributing to the conversation and not dominating that conversation. You wanna be assertive, but not aggressive. If you know you're an introvert or you're shy, then try and have a voice. If you are voiceless, then in this stage, unfortunately, you will be getting left behind. Make sure that you follow instructions carefully and you relate everything to the brief at hand. And you know what? Be prepared to stand up for yourself if you're getting criticized by other team members. There are many types of group exercises, so that can be an icebreaker, a leadership task, leader lust task, or they could also be called the discussions, case studies and presentations. I've already covered case studies and presentations and probably written tests. I've already covered that, so I'm not gonna cover that in this section. A leadership task is actually quite common for management consulting and for engineering disciplines. This is where they will be interviewing you specifically for your leadership skills. So how they will do this is that they will take it in turns to see everyone be put in a leadership position and to understand your style and how you would react to certain situations. As you will be expected to take charge, I will mention what a good leader looks like. A good leader is able to delegate effectively. The task may be set up in such a way where you won't be able to do it by yourself. So you'll need to understand and actually use the divide and conquer method that I said previously. So the best way to do that is speak to your team, identify your team's strengths, weaknesses, understand what the task is of hand and actually yeah, delegate. Sometimes you may actually be hands off as they don't want a leader to be quite overbearing. So understand and just like watch your team what needs to be done and if there are any problems then just address those problems there and then. If it is a leaderless task then it could just be a discussion where no one is a leader but you're all contributing to a discussion and yet yeah, you have to come up with a solution to a problem. Here it's all about communicating effectively and making sure that every voice is also heard and you're not being too dominant that you have to lead the conversation. 
Remember, you're constantly being monitored. So you want to be starting sentences like another approach would be here. You're demonstrating that you're accepting another person's point of view, but you're also adding on and building that point of view. Make sure you're not completely dismissing someone when you say another approach will be. Does anyone want to add to this? This is a great opportunity for you to bring others in the group that may be shy or introverted and to help them contribute to the conversation. I agree and like to add to that. This phrase is brilliant because it gives you a chance to understand what you're discussing as well as taking that point a step further. So be careful that you're not just waffling or just repeating what someone else just said. And finally, if you have a conclusion, then you can say to the recruiter, we seem to agree and we'd like to take the following action and explain what that action is. So you could actually be the dominating person right at the end to say that you completely understand what the discussion was and this is what you should be taking action for. This shows to them that you want to drive the task forward and also shows your leadership skills. It's super vital in the leaderless task or discussion that you're not too quiet and you are pitching up ideas. Finally, a group exercise could be comprised of an icebreaker. This is probably the least stressful one as you're working together to complete a practical task within a given deadline. So you could be expected to build a tower or a bridge using like paper clips and straws. Here, everyone is expected to play a part and to share some information. My best tips for this is you want to make sure that the group doesn't spend too much time in the planning phase and so they don't have much time in the construction phase. You want to keep the team moving forward. Remember, everyone has strengths within your team. Figure them out and work towards them so you're building that project in a good amount of time. Don't try and sabotage your team because that will just look bad on yourself as you are being constantly watched. Whatever the outcome of the assessment center, you should be wanting to hear feedback on how well you did during that day. Feedback is crucial. I've said it in my previous video, my seven tips. It is actually my final tip. So you need to ask for feedback. This will just help you set yourself up for success for your next assessment day. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video useful, please drop a like on the video. It really helps out my channel. Don't forget throughout the day, you will be given instructions, information that you have to carefully read. Don't just scan read. Don't rush it, take the time and actually read, soak in the information of what is actually expected for you to do during that day. If you have an assessment day coming up, drop it in the comments down below. I wanna sort of build a little community of the different assessment centers that people are applying to and what actually is comprised of those assessment centers. Let's try and help everyone pass these and yeah, secure some grad roles in 2022. Of course, if there's anything I've missed, please let me know in the comments down below. If you've done an assessment center and you've come across this video, drop your advice. I'm sure it'll be super valuable for everyone in the comments down below. Thank you so much again for watching. I really appreciate all the love and support I've got on this channel. If you don't know who I am, because I didn't actually make an intro at the beginning of this video, I'm a tech recruiter and I make videos on this channel helping you be career savvy. So you definitely want to be hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. Good luck on your assessment day. Be sure to check out my seven tips on how to effectively prepare for your assessment day. I'll put a link, of course, in the description down below. Check out my TikTok and my Instagram for more digestible tips and tricks. I know you'll absolutely smash it. Peace, I'll see you on the next one.